Hello there and welcome. You're watching The Nation with me, Jesse Chahel. Today, we zoom into Malaysia-Bangladesh relations. We talk about bridging nations and building a future together. Now, Bangladesh and Malaysia have a multifaceted relationship that includes diplomatic, trade, and even cultural ties. Malaysia is a major trading nation and a regional hub for trade in ASEAN. And Bangladesh is Malaysia's second largest trading partner in South Asia after India. And back in 2022, Malaysia exported 4.23 billion dollars uh, worth of uh, exports to Bangladesh, while Bangladesh in return exported $318 million to Malaysia. So much going on here and much to talk about, but we are indeed priv privileged to have in the studio uh, with us today His Excellency Muhammad Shamim Asan, the High Commissioner of the People's Republic of Bangladesh to Malaysia. Your Excellency, welcome to the nation. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure, of course, to have met you, but also to um, explore some of these areas of discussion that we have ahead of us. Um, it's coming up to a year since you've been here on Malaysian uh, shores. Uh, walk us through your journey so far. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to be at your studio. And I, um, I'm happy that I can, uh, your studio will be connecting me with the, your viewers. And uh, that gives me an opportunity to talk about my country, to discuss about bilateral relationship. And uh, this is uh, my first posting in Malaysia. And in other words, you can say in a country located in Southeast Asia. Malaysia is a very important country. And uh, talking about bilateral relations, we have extremely, extremely cordial bilateral relations uh, since Malaysia recognized their uh, uh, our independence and Malaysia enjoys distinct position because Malaysia was the first country in Southeast Asia to recognize our independence. I remember it was on 31st January 1972. In fact, that laid the foundation of, of our bilateral relationship. And over the period of our relation, I, I mean, uh, during last 53 years, it has it has uh, developed, it has grown in depth and dimensions, and we are working closely to further strengthen it and widen it. Well, of course, much to uh, share as well with a um, solid foundation, as you've highlighted, uh, through the friendship, but also the bilateral ties that both countries enjoy, much going to and fro between Malaysia and Bangladesh. How would you describe, if we could start from this point, the current relationship between both countries? In what ways, perhaps, do you envision Bangladesh and Malaysia advancing the strategic partnership, uh, perhaps in the next 10 years, the next decade? Um, are there any, any challenges? Um, that you foresee in achieving this? Mm, thank you. Uh, you have uh, made a very pertinent question. Uh, as I did mention that we have both countries in the extremely cordial bilateral relations. Our political re relations had been uh, extremely cordial without any irritant in our relationship. And uh, as you have all also mentioned, that uh, both countries enjoy significant trading relations, and it is uh, around four billion US dollar. Though it is overwhelmingly in favor of Malaysia, but we are working closely to balance it out so that we export more. In fact, we are for win-win. Uh, or in other words, mutually gainful engagements. And Malaysia happens to be the eighth largest uh, investor globally in Bangladesh. That is very significant. So about uh, your question, how I, how I foresee future relationship, I think that is very important. And as a diplomat or high commissioner, uh, my one of my priorities would be to change the narrative 
uh, of our bilateral relationship because the, the common perception of our bilateral relationship is that, uh, which I believe the a perception um, from the common people is that Bangladesh mainly sends workers. And that is the defining factor of a relationship, which is not reflective of the facts on the ground, though I don't, I, I don't uh, deny that it's partly true. What I would like to emphasize is that uh, one of my priorities during my uh, assignment would be to change the na narrative from a migrant sending country to 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 highlight Bangladesh as as a country of strategic as a relation of, or as, as to a country of strategic partnership, mm -hmm. and uh, we have significant engagements in in other areas in. Um, uh, you can say um, technology in uh, blue economy in there are other uh, emerging issues also in science and in innovation and uh, in climate science and there are very potential areas we can collaborate uh, connectivity education tourism culture manufacturing and uh, agriculture which uh, to mention a few so these are the uh, very potential areas. So we remain engaged to shift our relationship to those areas, eventually turning my country as a labor source country to a country of strategic partnership. I like um, that, and that's a strong statement, Your Excellency, um, to change that perception, uh, first and foremost, that it's not just a country um, that is uh, supplying us manpower, although yeah. that is very much the basis uh, of what we really um, hold on to uh, a lot of times in terms of service industries, if you will, and, and slightly beyond as well, but also to acknowledge the fact that in technology, in blue economy, and in um, tourism um, and even in education and agriculture, as you pointed out, there's still much to celebrate yeah. uh, in terms of that strategic partnership there. So I underscore that, and I and I, I really like that strong uh, statement that we're off to a good start, but we take a quick uh, breather at this point. We'll be right back after these few messages. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. This is The Nation right here on Bernama TV. Welcome back. You're watching The Nation right here on Bernama TV. I'm Jesse Chahal, seated with His Excellency Mohammad Shamim Asan, the High Commissioner of the People's Republic of Bangladesh to Malaysia. We're talking about the both countries, its diplomatic ties, but also in towards the goal of bridging these nations to build a better future together. Your Excellency, of course, just before the break, you made a, a comment and a statement that I, I like very much, that the perception should go just beyond um, manpower. But I come now to uh, this particular point, that Bangladesh is a major manpower source country uh, for Malaysia, uh, in, in, on which we heavily rely uh, on for migrant labor to fill hundreds and thousands of vacancies. Mm. And in diverse sectors, you've got plantations and manufacturing, but also agriculture, mining, construction to domestic services, and of course, food and beverage uh, here in Malaysia, very close to Malaysians' hearts there too. Um, what's happening back home, if you could just walk us through that, has raised some concerns or perhaps does pose a potential of impact to the Malaysian economy. How does the Commissioner uh, balance this issue? Well, thank you. Um, as you know that uh, an interim government has taken over uh, on 8th of August following the mass uh, protest and movement of the students, uh, which was supported by the common people, leading to the resignation of the uh, previous prime minister and paving the way for uh, forming of the new interim government, which is headed by uh, Novel Laureate, our only Nobel laureate, um, Professor Dr. Muhammad Yunus. I'm happy to share 
with you that the interim government under the leadership of the Honorable Chief Advisor, uh, Dr. Muhammad Yunus, has taken a series of steps um, uh, to address the issues. And if I summarize the steps, I would put in this way that the, one of the priorities of this government is uh, to ensure law and order and security. And uh, there has been impressive uh, improvement. And there are initial some challenges. Of course, you will agree that in a situation like uh, change of government following uh, mass officers, obviously some issues like law and order may come up. It's not something unheard of. Mm -hmm. So the government is effectively, uh, actively uh, doing it. And I note with satisfaction that uh, the army and the paramilitary all are supporting the civil administration in this regard. And the government has uh, remains place bound as dreamed and demanded by the students uh, and the common people, of course, uh, remains place bound to carry out essential reform works. And uh, there has been lots of changes, reshuffles, and policy ch is are being addressed. And uh, obviously, the ultimate goal of the present interim government is to hold a, a, a national election in a free and impartial manner uh, in due course, mm -hmm. but um, but uh, we, the, the expectation of the common people is to create congenial atmosphere mm -hmm. for that, uh, which obviously involves um, taking some reform measures in uh, various sectors, uh, which can, if I specify, is uh, ensuring good governance, combating corruption, and mismanagement. So, and, and uh, the vital reforms would be uh, to, to name a few areas because of the importance. It's election commission, judiciary, civil administration, security, area and media of course. right your excellency while that uh, reforms are taking shape and taking place us in malaysia perhaps uh, do feel or are raising the, the concern that will this have an impact to uh, malaysia in terms of the economy uh, how would you reassure the people i don't think so i'm i'm happy to share with you that in 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 many cases, as we have witnessed in many countries, when there is change of uh, uh, power through through upheavals or mass upsurges, um, it it had long running impacts on economy and other vital sectors. But in case of Bangladesh, the protests and upsurges were not a long running issue. Luckily, it we witnessed for a few weeks, if we mean the the final days, uh, with the result that it did not affect our productivity or economic activities mm -hmm. that much. Obviously, it did affect, but not not much. And the government has taken remedial measures to revive the economy, to inject dynamism in every sector. And, and so long bilateral relation with Malaysia is concerned, I don't see or foresee an interruption of sending our workers to Malaysia. And I, we, I can mention one relevant issue that we have been waiting for the uh, meeting, next meeting of the joint working group, which is scheduled to take place in capital Dhaka, Dhaka. We, we expect that it will be held in near future. And I presume it perhaps within one, two months. It's a very, very important platform mm -hmm. uh, between the two countries to discuss about human resource issues headed by secretary generals of the two Ministry. human resources ministries. Right. In our case, we call it expatriate welfare ministry and Malaysia 
Ministry of Human Resources. And as important uh, as that is as well, um, there's also on the table um, the signing of the FTA, yeah. uh, which is mainly, of course, aimed to boost bilateral trade and investment. Mm -hmm. But it also explores the the concept, uh, perhaps, or the option of uh, the international standard of education and healthcare services that's available um, in Malaysia. What can you share uh, more on the status or the future of the FTA between Malaysia and Bangladesh? Yes, this is a very important area. When you talk about um, bilateral cooperation, in these days we mean, um, or perhaps economic and, and trade links come to the forefront. And I'm happy to share with you that our bilateral relationship over the years assumed economic uh, significance. And to add to that, both countries uh, remained uh, uh, proactively engaged to sign FTA, Free Aid Agreement. In fact, Bangladesh side proposed it in September 2019 and again in July. Uh, 2023. And there has been some progress, but we are pushing it so that uh, we, it can be signed in near future. And I think signing of FTA would be a something uh, win-win situation, will lead us to a win-win situation um, because it will help us boost, boost bilateral trade uh, between the two countries. and. Uh, just to elaborate it, that uh, um, a good number of um, Bangladeshi students are studying in Malaysia, and I am happy to share with you that Malaysia remains one of the, globally speaking, one, Malaysia remains one of the most preferred um, destinations for education from Bangladesh students, especially for higher education, because Malaysia um, enjoys the reputation for being host of a good number of universities and institutions of excellence. So that is one of the uh, attractions for the Bangladeshi students. And I think that there are huge potentials in sharing knowledge and Malaysian KPJ running hospital in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. It is there, you know. And Bangladesh telecom company, Robi, which is a very well-known yeah. company, has Malaysian share. I'm very hopeful that with the signing of FTA, there will be uh, more opportunities which will equally benefit both the friendly countries. Absolutely, Your Excellency. As we look towards bridging both nations and building a future, there's much more opportunities that are already in place mm. but can be uh, explored further. We take another quick break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching The Nation right here on Purnama TV. We'll be right back in just a few moments. Hi there, you're watching The Nation. I'm Jesse Chahal. I'm joined in the studio by His Excellency Muhammad Shamim Ahsan, the High Commissioner of the People's Republic of Bangladesh to Malaysia. We're talking about Malaysia and Bangladesh bridging nations, building uh, a future together. Of course, much is already in motion, uh, Your Excellency. But now we look at Malaysia as a holiday destination. Um, in terms of uh, both countries, what can be done uh, for this uh, to be increased? Are there specific initiatives or campaigns uh, that are in place to promote tourism? Thank you. I think, uh, as you have correctly mentioned, and Malaysia remains uh, one of the attractive tourist destinations uh, um, on the part of the Bangladeshis, and the growing number of Bangladeshi tourists uh, speak about that. And at the same time, I would like to highlight that Bangladesh is also uh, a country blessed with lots of tourist attractions. Unfortunately or ironically, perhaps uh, many of them remain uh, less publicized or the international media does not, um, uh, does not uh, cover them generously as it could have done. But on our part, 
we are on the part of government and here the High Commission, we, uh, we have taken some uh, um, initiatives to promote and project our uh, touristic potentials. Uh, let me point out one issue that is uh, uh, the Bisho Istema, World Istema. Istema is some kind of religious gathering in Bangladesh, who is, uh, which is uh, the second largest uh, Muslim gatherings after the Holy House. Just to mention about one religious issue which can attract foreigners, and it has been attracting. So, and there are on many historical sites and let me point out one, our sea beach, Cox's Bazar, which is the longest unbroken sea beach in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. So we have some unique, unique uh, attractions which can um, um, draw the attention of the potential tourists. But about your course and how we can, uh, we can uh, make it more attractive, yes, on our part, uh, at the High Commission, uh, we have a digital, which is, which is a digital version of monthly magazine. We put in every uh, issue we highlight uh, um, some touristic attractions, mm -hmm. and we have a very significant audience for, for that. And you will be happy to learn that in seven days there are th th uh, um, Bangladesh Biman, Malaysian Airlines, Air Asia, and several other. Uh, airlines fly in all seven days we have flights that does indicate the the, the magnitude of people flying in both countries but we need to invest more we need to do more in in in, in diverting them to to to, uh, to to avail the time to become tourists in both countries. I'm happy just to share, Your Excellency, the first flight I ever took, the first airline I ever flew with was with Biman Airlines, and it was such a memorable. Happy to uh, Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. But from that, let's move uh, to Malaysia being the ASEAN chair mm -hmm. um, next year. What are Bangladesh's expectations from Malaysia? We're looking at uh, it from a regional regional perspective in terms of key issues like climate change and security uh, as well as economic development? At the outset, as envoy of Bangladesh to friendly country Malaysia, uh, let me congratulate Malaysia in advance as Malaysia is said to become chair of ASEAN uh, from January uh, next year. This is one thing. And uh, Bangladesh, but, uh, as uh, on the part of Bangladesh, I think um, during the chairmanship of Malaysia, uh, we will witness important developments. And along with the advancement of trade and investment, science, innovation, technology, tourism, education, etc., traditional and non-traditional security issues. Uh, should be a priority for Malaysian leadership in the ASEAN, I understand. And talking on part of Bangladesh, which is a, a major issue, is that um, that is the protracted Rohingya issue. Mm -hmm. issue. Bangladesh has been hosting 1.1 million Rohingya refugees for long, and uh, we are appreciative we deeply appreciate Malaysia's steadfast support uh, on this issue for their safe return to the country of their origin. I think uh, there are two major issues during the chairmanship of Malaysia in ASEAN on the part of Bangladesh. We have been a candidate to become ASEAN uh, uh, sector, ASEAN's sectoral dialogue partner. I think um, our friendly country, Malaysia's assuming chairmanship, will will put it on a better footing to 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 get our dream fulfilled. And at the same time, um, Malaysia would be in a better position to uh, for for increased pressure on Myanmar so that they take back 
the, the, their nationals from Bangladesh. Right. Your Excellency, it has been an interesting discussion, of course, pertinent as well, as you've brought up not just some current issues, but also uh, towards the opportunities that lie ahead for both countries. I want to thank you for your time uh, coming in here. It has been a pleasure. Very quickly, under 10 seconds, as it has been a tradition uh, here on The Nation, when we have uh, you know, VIPs like yourself, um, perhaps we not normally post this question on what is your favorite food here in Malaysia since you've been here? In fact, uh, I like many foods of Malaysia because they are almost similar to, to Bangladesh food. And uh, the rice had been very stuff had been a staple food in uh, in my country, which is also available here. And uh, all other foods are sometimes a bit served, cooked and served in a different way. Right. Uh, but I uh, but I I feel uh, almost same. But I can mention about one fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, food, generally speaking, I love them. But the mangosteen. Mangosteen. It has, I, 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 I liked it so much uh, so that I sent it in boxes to my relatives oh, uh, through wonderful. some persons. Yeah. Uh, and I hope to carry many other items along with I do believe mango it's steam. in season as we speak. Uh, so, you know, you're in luck there. Once again, Your Excellency, thank you for your time. And uh, we look forward to having you back here in the studio for more lengthy discussions. This has been the time right here on The Nation. Thank you so much for joining me. Keep it locked on to Brunama TV. Many more inter interesting discussions like this coming up. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.